What's up guys and welcome back to Monique. If you guys are new here then what is up? My name is Erica. Hey, how you doing? And if you're into the history of the ancient Greeks and the Romans, maybe you're just into the mythology and maybe, maybe you're just here to see how Odysseus gets on on the island of Scaria. Well then this is not only the video for you, this is also the channel for you. You guys are going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you know every single time I post in the future. But on topic of today's video, and as you can see from the title, we're going to be diving into book six of Homer's Odyssey. So if I could summarize book six into a one sentence, it would be that Nausicaa shows Odysseus who the f is boss of this island, right? That is basically what happens. Nausicaa is a strong female character who now, you know, shows up and she's unproblematic and she's actually like really cool. And she shows up in this book and she puts Odysseus in his place very respectfully. Let's just start with that. It's done respectfully, she's not rude at all and we love her for it. So in saying all of that, why don't we just roll into the narrative so that you guys can meet Nausicaa and um, yeah. Where I left you guys last time in book five was that Odysseus washes up to the island of Scaria. He is exhausted from the 20 day journey there and he ends up just passing out in the forest, right? So Athena helps him to sleep because obviously <laughs> he's exhausted, but like you can imagine that he's also like high on adrenaline from literally nearly being killed by Poseidon. That happened. And so Athena made him fall asleep and we pick up literally like right here, basically. It's right before dawn. So it's like just in that time before like daybreak and Athena decides to put her plan into motion. She decides to go to the palace of the Phaeacians, to go to the city of the Phaeacians, which is where they are. The Phaeacians live on Scaria. She goes to the palace and the palace is run by this guy, Ron. <laughs> palace, the king of the palace, Ron, as if he's like the boss. The king of the palace is a guy called Alcanus and she decides, Athena decides to go to his daughter, who's now Sakea. So she takes on the form of this guy called Demas, D-Y-M-A-S. I don't actually know if that's how you say it, but his daughter, who's like Nausicaa's like best friend. She takes on her form. She goes into Nausicaa's bedroom where Nausicaa is asleep with these two handmaidens who flank her to basically like protect her as she sleeps. And if she needs anything, then like they're there. And she goes into Nausicaa's dream. Now, normally in mythology, <laughs> when episodes like this happen, it's like some really heartfelt moment where like the goddess will come in and be like, I need you to have faith. This happened with Penelope not too long ago where she was visited by Athena as her sister, but still she was visited by her sister. She had this really heartwarming conversation with her. Not this time. <laughs> so what happens now is that Athena takes on the form of Nausicaa's like BFF, goes into her dream and just goes, oh my God, it is so unfortunate that your mother had a daughter like you. Pretty much verbatim. It's obviously like not what it says in the ancient Greek, but if you paraphrase it, that's exactly what Athena says to her and just says that she's a mess. Her room is a mess. Her life is a mess. How the f does she plan on getting married soon? Because she's of age to get married, which means that in ancient times, She's about like 12 or 13 years old-ish is sort of how old Nausicaa is. And she just tells her off in her dream. And she's like, look, you gotta get your shit together. You have to get your life together. If you want to get married to a good man, go and do some laundry and clean up. Literally, like, it's a very odd, thing where she orders her like how to do laundry. She's like, you're gonna pick up all the clothes in your room. You're gonna put them all in a wagon, ask your dad for this wagon, get your dad to get some mules for the wagon as well. Put everything in there, go down to the river, bring some handmaidens with you because you're gonna have a lot of laundry to do and then do it. And then she f***s off. That's the best part. She then just like leaves as if it's like, I came to say my piece and that's it. And then at dawn, Nausicaa wakes up and she's infused with this desire to do all the laundry in the palace. And it genuinely, like if one of my mates woke up from a dream and was like, yo, I just like have the desire to do all this laundry and I'm just gonna have like a laundry day. I would be like, what? How high were you when you went to sleep last night? Like, that's a really weird dream to have. Even in ancient times, like this is a very odd episode. Like, it's just, it's not one that happens. I can't list one other person. Genuinely, I can't think of one other person in ancient times who has had a dream about doing laundry because a goddess has infused them with said dream. Either way, Nausicaa wakes up, has this whole idea to go and do all this laundry. So she goes down to find her parents. She has to go and obviously someone has to help her put together the wagon, which is what Athena told her to do. She goes down, she finds her mom. Her mom is like doing this whole yarn thing with this like blue yarn. I don't know why I had to tell you it was blue, but it is. And so <laughs> she has this whole yarn thing and she's like, where's dad? And her mom's like, Meh. and she turns around. She ends up intercepting her dad when her dad is on the way to have these meetings with these noblemen. Cause again, Alcanus is the king. He has to, you know, order everything. Everything. So she goes up to him and she says, look, I really want to go and do laundry today. I just want to clean everything up. And not only my stuff, I will clean my stuff as well, but I want to clean your stuff. And 
not only your stuff, I would like to clean all of my brother's stuff as well. So, because that sounds like a lot of laundry, I'm going to need a wagon and I'm going to need some mules. Do you mind helping me out and supplying said wagon and said mules? Just for context, right, she doesn't only have like one brother, right? She's actually got five brothers, three of whom are bachelors in the palace, two of whom are married. She wants to do all of their laundry. And Alkinus, her father, the king, doesn't think this is weird. He's just like, oh yeah, sure. And then gets her the wagon and gets her the mules and then she packs everything into them and then they go. Like, like literally that's what more than half the book is the description of that. I just summarized it for you in, in live time, by the way, it's been four minutes and I just did that for you. I don't know how long in editing it will be. <laughs> that is the, the premise of this book. It's odd, I'm not gonna lie to you. Anyways, anyways. Now Sake and her handmaidens, they go down to the river. There's a a very long description of how ancient people would have washed their clothing in the river, which I'm obviously not going to tell you now. But what is nice about this whole description is that they kind of make a day out of it, right? So we have Nausicaa and her handmaids, they, they have to strip off their own clothes as well because they have to wash their, the clothes that they're wearing. They wash themselves in the river as well and then they put all this like olive oil on themselves. They end up playing ball games together. Nausicaa then leads them in like singing and dancing. They have set up a picnic, they haven't touched it yet, but they have that set up. So really they're just having a nice day whilst they have then moved moved all of the clothing out of the water to then have it dry up on, on the rocks because obviously they didn't have tumble dryers in those times. So that is, is the situation that's going on there where they're just having a nice day, a, a weirdly nice laundry day. I have never had a nice laundry day, but sure now, okay, do your thing. Athena sees this and Athena's just like, great, my plan is going fantastically. And she goes back to the forest and she decides that now Odysseus has to wake up. So what the girls do is, this is all infused by Athena, that, that as Nausicaa is playing ball with one of her handmaidens, she misses her handmaid, she's got terrible name and she misses her handmaiden and it ends up landing in this little puddle and it sprays all of the girls and all the girls like squeal they're like oh no my goodness I'm going wet and because of that squeal that is what causes Odysseus to wake up in this moment so Odysseus rises and he's like where the f am I like what is going on because bear in mind he has no idea that he's washed up on scary he has no idea that he's washed up on the land of the Phaeacians this is all news to him and when he wakes up he can hear, you know, all of these screams from the girls and all of this. And he doesn't know if the people of this island are going to be friendly. He doesn't know if they're going to be violent. He doesn't even know if the women that he's hearing, because obviously they're women, but he doesn't know if the women that he's hearing are nymphs or if they're people. He doesn't know if they're mortals. He doesn't know if they're gods. He has no idea what is going on. Just think about how jarring that has to be for Odysseus. Like he has spent 20 days on the sea. He has been pelted by Poseidon. He has been shown that he is hated by the gods and then he washed well you know the, the important god the one that governs the entire sea hates him which is obviously not a good thing and so he then wakes up and he's naked and he doesn't know what to do so he ends up grabbing this this tree branch off the tree this branch off the tree to cover up his dignity and he decides to leave to come out of the forest to come out of hiding and when he does that all of the maidens like whip their heads around to see who is approaching and they see a man who is butt naked again, probably looks well worse for wear. I'm gonna say he's close to skin and bone at this point as well because he has not been eating well. So this man is skinny. He's just, it's not a good look for Odysseus. He's described as stalking forward like a lion. That is important. It's just a description that's always stuck with me since I studied it for the first time. So he stalks forward and these girls are scared to say the least, okay? The handmaidens are like, what the f is that? So they end up turning around and running away, right? They book it. They, they just run into hiding, all except Nausicaa. So Nausicaa is infused by courage by Athena and she stands her ground and she just watches Odysseus as he approaches. And he's thankful that she hasn't run away from him. But as he's approaching, he doesn't actually know the appropriate way of approaching her. So he has this moment where he's thinking, you know, do I get down on my hands and knees? Do I supplicate her? Do I approach her and hug her? Do I just ask her outright for things? You know, what am I supposed to do? So he decides that he's going to ask her to leave him to her people, to the town, to the city where she's from. And because that's his goal, he decides he's going to keep a respectful distance between the two of them. So he stops up short and he just basically gasses Nausicaa up. He's just like, wow, you're absolutely beautiful. And the man who one day is going to call you his wife is super lucky. And your family is super lucky because you look like a goddess. Like you rival Artemis in your beauty and in your innocence. And he, he even describes how he one time went to Delos, which is an island, it's a magical island in Greek mythology. It's a real island in real life I've been. But he describes this episode where he goes to Delos and he saw the palm tree with which Apollo and Artemis were born underneath. That's a whole other myth 
that we're not going to get into, but there is a whole terrifying myth of Hera. But anyway, so they're born underneath this palm tree and he ends up seeing it and he said that he looked at this site in awe because that was where the twins were born. And it's the same awe that he feels now that he felt when he was looking at this palm tree when he looks at Nausicaa, right? So he's doing the most to really make her be like, oh goodness, I'm great, aren't I? He explains his whole story to Nausicaa and he explains how he was on a Gigia and he asks her to be compassionate towards him and to understand that he needs her help and that is primarily why he's speaking to her. And so he wraps up his whole little like speech and she ends up replying and she just says, look, seems like you've been dealt some really unfortunate cards. I can't lie. That sounds like a terrible story. However, it's not up to a good man to have a good life. It's not up to a bad man to have a bad life. It is up to the gods. And the gods have decided that they are only going to give you pain and therefore you need to stop complaining and just man up. It's genuinely one of my favorite scenes. It's one of my favorite things in all of mythology. I say that a lot, I will admit. I say this a lot. But this is absolutely hysterical when you think that she's like 12 to 14 years old. There's a 40 year old man in front of her, like Odysseus, probably like late 30s, early 40s, I want to say, maybe mid 30s. I don't know. He's much older than her, right? Bear in mind, he has a 20 year old son. So he's got to be at least in his 30s. And this like young girl is being like, man up like this is not i don't know what to tell you i don't know what you want me to tell you right now apart from like these are the cards that you've been dealt so deal with it she does continue and actually says that odysseus is really lucky because he's washed up on a really great island basically she's just like you're so lucky because we will never let you go without food without clothing like you've washed up to the land of the phaeacians um king alcanus rules here you know her father rules there and she basically just says that he is is a lucky soul even though he's been dealt all of these terrible cards now there's at least one good good card in his hand. As she's saying this, it sort of clicks that none of her handmaidens are around. So she turns around to where they are and is just like, why the f are you guys hiding? Like you guys look absolutely ridiculous. Reason being because she explains that the, the place that Scaria is, is so far off from everything else. It's sort of, we know that Calypso's Island was really like remote because Hermes told us that in the previous book. And now she's saying they're even more far off. They're literally on like the world's end. So she explains to them, you know, in earshot of Odysseus, obviously. And she's like, there has literally never been a traveler that has come here who has wished ill on us. Like they've never been attacked in that way. Like people don't come to Scaria to do that because they're so far away from everything. And because of that, they have this belief that all of these uh, travelers who come to them, all these beggars that come to them are sent by Zeus. And so therefore they must be hospitable. And she basically tells them to get their together, come back over and help Odysseus. Nausicaa tells them to bathe Odysseus to then feed him. And then they're all gonna, you know, come up with a plan or whatever to get him back to uh, the city of the Phaeacians. And so all the women come out, they drag him over to the river. They give him this um, gold bottle of olive oil where he's then going to wash and then rub it on him. Uh, except when they get into the river, Odysseus is like, look, I'm like really flattered that you guys are being so hospitable and that you guys wanna do this for me. However, I have not taken a bath for like a really long time. I've not cleaned myself in a really long time and it's embarrassing that all of these young naked girls <laughs> are going to see me in this state. So I would much rather if I could do this by myself and the handmaidens are just like chill. And so they then walk away, they then go to set up the picnic instead and leave clothes out for him on the side of the river. And so Odysseus washes himself, he puts the oil on, he gets his clothes on and Athena decides that she's gonna do him a solid in this moment because he's surrounded by all of these girls. So she makes him seem more attractive. So she makes Odysseus a bit taller and a bit broader um, so that that way he appears a little bit bigger than he actually is and she also makes his hair um this like really nice like like in these like really nice curls so they look like hyacinth clusters is how they're described like she really helped him the fuck out because as he's approaching this little picnic that they've set up all the girls are a bit like whoo he cleans up nice so he sits down and he eats and it's described that he eats as if like he hasn't eaten in years like he just like you know shoves everything into his mouth and nasuke is thinking and they start packing up all their clothes and they start putting it into the wagon and she turns around to him and she says okay i've, I've got a plan now now i've thought about it i've got a plan and she explains explains that they're going to walk back to the city of the Phaeacians. And as they walk back through the fields and the farmlands, he's going to follow on next to them. Like he's gonna walk next to them whilst all the maidens are in the wagon and they're all just sort of chilling. And he's going to be allowed to do that up until the gates of the city. And she explains that it's because the Phaeacians are people who, they're like boat people basically, right? So they all have a boat. They're not people who fight on land. They don't have like swords and bows and arrows and any of that. They are sailors. And so because of that, there, there's like this boat port that's like right near where the gates of the city is. And she says, I'm not going to walk you through there because then all of the sailors, which is a vast majority of the Phaeacians themselves, are going to be there tending to their boats. And they're gonna see me leading the stranger man through the gates. And that's not gonna 
look good. Which is a really respectful point because she illustrates to him that they're all gonna start whispering, they're all gonna wonder who Odysseus is, they're gonna wonder if she's gonna marry him, and if she doesn't marry him, then they're all gonna look down on her because she herself would look down on the woman who acted that way. And she says that it's gonna reflect not only badly on me, but also badly on my family and badly on my dad, considering he's the king, that's not ideal. So we're going to, here's the plan, we're going to lead you to the gates. And then there's a sort of narrow pathway around the side, which leads to a grove. And it's like in shouting distance of where the city itself is. So it's not far at all. And so he's going to sit there, which is a grove to Athena, gonna sit there for a period of time. He's then going to have to figure out himself, how long he thinks they need in order to like go into the palace, to chill out, to unload everything. And when he thinks that they've had enough time, he will then walk through the gates of the city. And she says, look, you're not gonna be able to miss it. Honestly, any single child that you ask could direct you to the palace. So even if you get lost, which highly unlikely that you will, a literal child could redirect you to the palace. The instructions when Odysseus gets into the palace is to actually avoid her dad. And that is where we get this little female empowerment moment. That not only is Nausicaa being like, I need the respect from all of my people and I need you to respect my decision. And so you cannot walk next to me when we walk into the palace because that's gonna look shady as But you also need to not approach my dad. In fact, you need to go straight to my mom. Now their thrones are really close together. They sit really close together. My mom is going to be sitting by the hearth. She's probably gonna be weaving or she's going to be with a ball of yarn or something like that. She's gonna be sewing something. And you're gonna wanna go to my dad. You're gonna wanna supplicate him, but you need to go to my mother. And she says that that's because in Phaeacia, in their family, if she does not approve, if Ariti doesn't approve of Odysseus, he will not get off the island and he will not be accepted to having their help. And that is so important that he has to ignore the king who holds the power on this island. The women do and we are here for it and odysseus what's even better about this episode that i really love is that odysseus doesn't question her he doesn't say anything he's not just like actually you're a woman and i think no he fully respects her he fully understands what she says and they start moving so when they start moving they go towards the palace he then veers off to the grove of Athena and Nausicaa and her girls go back to the palace. When he goes to the grove, he prays to Athena because he thinks that Athena hasn't been listening to any of his prayers. Little does he know that she has hatched this entire plan without him knowing. So he prays to her there and we know that she hears the prayer because Homer tells us that Athena heard the prayer. And then we know that she's going to help him. But also we get a little note from Homer right at the end of this book that even though Athena is in like a really good mood because Odysseus is, is going along the way that she has intended him to go, that Poseidon, is still seething with the idea that he hasn't killed Odysseus yet. And he's going to be seething up until Odysseus is on the shores of Ithaca. I was gonna say Ithacan shores, but I'm not sure if you can say Ithacan, but either way, that is up until the point where Poseidon is gonna stop being mad is only if Odysseus makes it home. When Odysseus makes it home, that that is when he's going to finally simmer down because he's pissed as f and that is how the book ends. That is how book six ends. So book six is not an incredibly important book, I would say in the grand scheme of uh, the Odyssey itself. However, is it interesting? Absolutely. Is it one of my favorites because of the little female empowerment moment because you have Nausicaa and Ariti? Well, we don't get Ariti by name yet, but the queen? Yeah, it is one of my favorite episodes because of that and because we move away from problematic Calypso to these two women who are very respectable and very respectful of other people and we are here for it. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. If you guys enjoyed it and you guys wanna see um, the rest of my series, then you guys are gonna wanna hit that subscribe button. Please, I love it. I love it when that button is hit. It genuinely makes my day when I come onto YouTube and I'm just like, I have another subscriber. Yay, another nerd, amazing. So please hit that button if you guys are enjoying the video and um, we'll be seeing you next time with book seven of the Odyssey. So we'll see you then.